explains cotting is um, a trim or a decorative element that you take up the wall. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you were cutting lumber way back when, in the 1800s or whatever, when this style actually came into play, the wane of the, of the tree is actually where the outer um, cells of the tree are, where you get a lot of the knots and things like that. And that was usually discarded because it's not structurally sound. Throw it away. But now what they were doing was applying it to the walls, and it actually created a, a heating element in your house to keep the cold out and keep the, the room warm. That's fascinating. Isn't it fascinating? Whenever you tile up a wall, you have to make sure that your first course is level. If you're tiling from a floor, you have to check the level of your floor with a spirit level. In our case, we found that our floor was slightly out of level. So this only leaves us two options. One, we can install a ledger and tile up from that, or you can scribe a line all the way around the room that represents the level first course. So first, we find the low spot in the floor. Then we set a full tile there, knowing that when we inscribe our line around the room, we're gonna have to cut those tiles, and some of these might be a very small sliver. The first course of tile when you're going up a wall is the most important. It has to be level, and remember, we use this level line that went all the way around, which established a level plane for us to set the tiles above. This meant that we had to cut in each piece of tile that went in since we were out of level. The next thing is we use our level on top of the first row of tile to make sure that it's not only level, but looking underneath the level to make sure that no tiles are low or out of place. Now in this case, we are using a running bond, so we're gonna start out with a full tile over here in this corner, and then it'll go to a half a tile on the other side. The next row, we'll start out with a half a tile. That sets up our running bond. When applying the thin set to the drywall, you use the flat side of the trowel to key in the mortar. Then you comb it out using the notch side. That will establish the uniform depth if you keep the trowel at a consistent angle. Once you put your tile in place, you want to pull it off to check your coverage. In this installation, we want at least 80%. Now for this Wayne's coating job, we've got several different cuts to make. Some are just simple straight cuts, but others are some 45 degree cuts for that feature strip we're going to put in later. But one thing you always have to have with a wet saw are these and these. So here we have our line on our tile. We're going to line that up with the blade, and it's just a real simple process. Watch this. Here's our first course again that we leveled, which was quite a bear, but we got it done. Now I'm going to put thin set on the wall, and I'm going to start with this course, which starts with a full tile. This is a real easy process. Again, we're going to key the mortar in with the flat side. All the same. Same deal. If you get into a, if you get into a habit of doing this every time, pretty soon it'll be second nature. You won't even have to think about it. And then after, after we put this key and coat on, then we're going to come right back and we're going to put on our comb coat and keep that trowel at a consistent level or a consistent angle and you put on a level coat the same depth there every time whenever you drop that thin set on your tile work below you just got to remember to wipe it up before you get too ahead of yourself before it dries. But you know what? If you forget it, it's no big deal because it comes off pretty easy with a little margin trowel. Now see, when your trowel skips like that, you just want to add some more and come right back up. That way you got plenty of thin set for the back of your tile. Again, we're going to clean that top edge off so that when you put those tiles in, it doesn't squeeze out, which makes your grouting process a lot harder afterwards. Again, this is a full tile. It still sets up our stagger. And you see where I missed that little spot right there? Just going to add a little bit of thin set to that corner there. Pop that tile in.
And you know what we didn't talk about? If you put a tile in and you ever pull it back, we showed you what good coverage was. Well, let's say it isn't, so let's check it. Ah, see? See that bare spot right there? So what do you do? Take some thin set. You add it there. You add it where you still got those trowel ridges. And then we're just going to put that tile right back where it was. And it's a good time to talk about lippage. You know, floors have lippage, which make you trip. But if you have lippage in your walls down in here, the light will pick it up and create shadows. You don't want that. So you just make sure that it's nice and flush all the way around. That tile set. Now, what you have to have when you're tiling walls, you got to have spacers to keep them up and expose your grout joint here. All right. Now we finished up the lower part of our walls like we've seen, and we've started to run our or detail or a feature strip like right here. Now this looks fabulous. It looks really intricate, but it's really not. Let me show you what it really is. Right here, all that it consists of is a chair rail, a stone bull nose, and then this tile that miraculously already comes pre-mounted. So it's really simple. Now all we have to do here is pre-cut our tile into our detail at a 45 at the corners, and then we're ready to set it just like any other tile. Okay, well you Get some thin set on your trowel again, mixed per the manufacturer's instructions, recommendations. You're going to put that first coat on the wall, and that's key and in the mortar. It's like we talked about in the lower part. I'm going to go across, then we're going to come back, and we're going to start setting it and troweling it with the notch side of the trowel right up the wall. Now this trowel size we're using here is a quarter by three eighths, which on this stone will give us plenty of coverage like we've seen before without having to back butter the stone themselves, which really helps save us some time. Now then, here goes that tile that's face mounted. And that just simply goes in here. And then a trick here is to use a little two before, a little piece of drywall, something that's flat, and we can just make sure that all of those pieces are in at the same plane, make them look real nice. Put that bad boy right in there, grab a couple spacers, put that in, make sure we're all lined up. If we got to add a wedge over here, we can do that too. And then once you're done with this, you're going to cut off all this and clean it up with a sponge real nice. So if the painter comes back, he can just paint that. It's looking good so far. Talk to me, though, about the coloration, because we've got a lot of variation of the color. Is that pretty standard with That's travertine? That's very standard with travertine. So don't panic if no, you choose not. travertine and you see that. That's, That's normal. right. It okay. just got to blend in. It's just nothing's changed there. OK, cool. So we're going to carry this all the way out. This is going to be the wainscoting that we're going to be doing also out into the main body That's of the bathroom. That's exactly right, all the way around. Now that our wall tile is set, we're ready to start grouting. Now there's a couple of things that we need to do. First of all, put on your gloves to protect your hands. And then what you need to do is dry mix your grout to make sure that the pigment is evenly distributed. Then what we're going to do is, per the manufacturer's instructions, we're going to take the amount of water that they recommend, add it to our bucket, and then slowly start adding our grout to our water, mixing it as we go with our power drill mixer. Then we need to let that rest for a few minutes. That's actually called flaking. After it's flaked for about 10 minutes, we're gonna remix it, and then we'll be ready to apply it to the walls. Grouting is a simple process. What you wanna do first is you wanna moisten your tile work with a nearly dry sponge. Don't leave any standing water in the joints. Next, force the maximum amount of grout that you can into each joint. Cut off the excess grout with your grout float held at a sharp angle. Next, wait for the grout to set up so that you can touch each joint without having any grout come back on your finger. The next step, using a nearly dry sponge, is to tool your joints, removing pinholes, voids, or any high and low spots. The next step is a final wipe using a nearly dry sponge pulled once across the tile work at a diagonal. 
Once a haze develops, polish that off with cheesecloth or terry cloth, being careful not to disturb the finished joints. We've got some slate tile that we've got to get to. It's going to be cool. Oh, yeah. We have already applied our backer board, and this is basically the same application as what you would do on your floor. The only difference is, as opposed to using a quarter inch backer board on your flooring, we're using a half inch. Right. Well, that gives us a little bit more resistance to heat because we're right in front of a fireplace. But it's a dry area, so we don't have to use all that felt and all those other things. Right. We're going to screw it down, and again, over here on the edges, we're going to need to tape and um, uh, mud that as well. Right. With just regular thin set. This is going to be actually a fantastic project. Now, you know, tile was huge around fireplaces at the turn of the century. You would get decorative tiles, even like tiles that would tell a story. Mm. Really neat stuff. But we kind of moved away from that. But I like the trend now of moving back and surrounding your fireplaces with tile. Um, but we do have a little bit of a different application here, right? Well, only in terms of uh, we're going to put slate on this fireplace. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, is that when they framed it out and drywalled it, we have a difference in elevation between the existing masonry and the drywall. It's like half an inch. Right, so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to build that out so that our bed that we're gonna be placing our slate on will be flush with the drywall. Right. So we're not actually using the same type of mortar that we've been using in the past. We're actually using wall mud, right? Right, wall mud is uh, cement, sand, and sometimes lime at a ratio of about one part cement to probably a half part lime and then up to about seven parts of damp sand. Well, you note here, Jody, how Mike applies the concrete plaster adhesive to the existing masonry. Mm -hmm. While it's still tacky, then you want to apply the first coat of mortar. Right, then after that sets, you want to put a tight coat on. Right. And that's basically just making sure that the mortar is going to adhere to the existing uh, surface that was there already. That's exactly right. Actually, what he created for this application to make it easier for him to spread it onto the wall was what contractors call a hawk, and that's basically just taking a piece of plywood, cutting it into a small square that you can manage, and just kind of sticking a stick underneath it so that you can hold it, and that way you can manipulate the mud and get it in the right angle so that you can apply it to the wall easily. That's right. These uh, hawks have been used for a long, long time by masonry guys. But you know that whole vertical mud, uh, wall mud application is almost, almost a lost art in many areas of the country. Absolutely. Wasn't it cool how I used that two by four to oh, yeah. rock that off? Absolutely, and that way you get a nice, smooth, even flush coat with our drywall, which is what we needed to do. Right, and then once that cures, we're ready for slate. We didn't use rapid setting thin set on this hearth, so we're back the next day to tile it. So, let's measure it and figure out how we're gonna do it. I already know the measurements. You do? I'm going to say 87 and a uh, quarter. Close. What is it? 86 and a half. Oh, shoot. And half of that? It's uh, 86, 23 and a quarter. How about 43? Oh, 43. 86. Shoot. 43 and a quarter. <laughs> so the center is 43 and a quarter. Now, we already took the liberty of sorting our slate. And we're going to start from uh, the front edge and go back, right? There's our center line. We know we're going to have tile that's going to overhang. What's our joint, our, uh, our grout joint? Qu uh, quarter. Do we 